I have created a perfect 4231 tactic that has achieved instant success with three different clubs, scoring over 100 league goals each single time. I won three league titles in three different countries. In one season, we won the treble. In another season, we were nowhere near the favourites to win the league. But we did it. Miracles. How exactly did we do it? Welcome back as I'm here to show off the new perfect 4231 tactic. Very successful. We created it on stream, so make sure you are following me on Twitch and make sure you're keeping up with this great story as we are now approaching season 25. But as you can see, we did win the treble in Netherlands. We won the Super Cup, then we won the Dutch Cup, and we finally wrapped up the Eredivisie after plugging this tactic. But once we wrapped up the Eredivisie title, we left. The job was done. We left, we went to Sassuolo and then instantly, instantly we won the Serie A. We weren't even predicted to finish in the top eight, but we managed to win the Serie A by uh, breaking Sassuolo's record points, of course. With Sassuolo, we managed to score 110 goals, getting 92 points in our first, first Serie A campaign. And with the grass chap in the Netherlands, we played 34, winning 30 of those games, only losing one. Uh, we conceded 15, but we did manage to score 102 goals in the Eredivisie. But we tested it in Italy, we tested it in the Netherlands, and there is a new team. Well, I say a new team. There is a team that needs a slight tactical rebuild, and that is Manchester United. So I know it works at Sassuolo. I know it works at the grass shop. Well, kind of in season oh, year 2045, but we are going to tweak it a little bit and we're going to make it suit Manchester United for their new tactical rebuild. Of course, with new signings, we've put Onana in Manchester United, Mason Mount in in Manchester United but we've also added two other new additions to that squad for our Manchester United tactical rebuild. Mason Mount at Manchester United in his new role managed to do A-OK. -okay. He played 42 games or he started 42 games. He scored 11 goals and he got 15 assists. So he got double figures with goals and assists. He had a very, very good debut campaign, getting an average rating of 7.39. Goalkeeper Andre Onana also had a very, very good debut campaign in the Premier League. He started 35 games. He got 21 clean sheet in those 20, uh, 35 games, sorry, getting an average rating of 7.22. But who? were the other two new additions. Sofian Amrabat from Fiorentina. Now he's a defensive midfielder, neat and tidy, rumored to be joining Manchester United in real life. If I had to give him a role, uh, football manager terms, then I would say he's a deep line playmaker in real life. He can play alongside Casemiro or slightly ahead, but I would go with just alongside Casemiro. So welcome Sofian Amrabat to Manchester United. He also had a decent season, by the way, starting 30 games, uh, scoring three goals, getting six assists and an average rating of 7.18 in all competitions. And most excitingly, we have signed Rasmus Hojan. I say signed, we used the editor and we just put him in Manchester United. So those are the four new signings for this Manchester United tactical rebuild. Mason Mount, Onana, Amrabat and Rasmus Hojlund, who is six foot three and in his debut campaign, I mean, what a campaign he had. He started 40 games, scored 42 goals, four assists with an average rating of 7.60. So for Manchester United in the Premier League, we played 38. We won 32, drawing five, only losing one game. Now, if you see that one game that we lost to, I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. We lost at home to Crystal Palace. Otherwise, we would have done Invincible, which actually isn't too far off what we did at the Grass Shop, only losing one game. And at Sassuolo, we only lost two games in our debut campaign. But our first loss came in match day 33. How frustrating is that? We only lost two games, but our first loss came in match day 33 once the league title was wrapped up as well. So we could have actually done the unbeaten season in our first season at Sassuolo, but, you know, football manager just didn't allow it. We do have a UEFA Champions League game to play, which will be played at the very end of this video. We do have the English FA Cup as well that we got knocked out of in the semi-final against Liverpool, and we are the runners-up in the Carabao Cup again. 
again, this is Liverpool. Thank God we don't have Liverpool in the Champions League final. Stats, because we all love stats. Manchester United scored the most. We had the most shots for and the fewest shots against. So, the, I mean, perfect. Perfect toll. We also had the most clean sheets and the fewest conceded when it comes to most dribbles. Again, disappointingly, we're not in the top eight. Now, I believe it was the last video or the video before that. We weren't in the top eight, though we had run out defence, which I thought was slightly disappointing. But if we're winning games and we're on top of the league, does it matter? I did obviously get rid of players. We couldn't get rid of Harry Maguire. If I'm totally honest, I didn't even want to in the first place. But we did get rid of Anthony Alanga, James Garner, Eric Bailly, Alex Telles, Fred, Daniel Gore, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and Charlie McNeil. Van der Beek went out on loan, Pelestri went out on loan, and so did Brandon Williams. But our squad was big for the season because what I did is promote some of the youth players. Now, if I sort this team out by age, Kobe Mayno, he played seven games or started seven games, got two assists. Garnacho started seven, not a lot. He got two goals. Shola Shortire, though, he started 14 games. Clearly, I like him. He scored two, got three assists. And we also have Hannibal and Amadiano who made their way, got promoted into the first team. Hannibal started seven games. Amadiano didn't actually start a game now i feel that's harsh on him but we did have anthony we did have rashford we did have sancho we did have i mean there's other wingers anthony as well and when you see the formation you're gonna understand why not all of these wingers could have fit in this perfect tactic training wise i also have some training schedules for you as well so when you have one game during the week now i've actually designed this mainly just for saturday when there's one game during the week when there's two games during the week it will be wednesday and saturday when i am doing these tactical tests like this manchester united one i do change my match days only to wednesday and saturday and one reason why is for these training schedules it's easy for me to then just plug it in the schedule each week it's just a copy and paste job for me and then I can go. So when there's one match during the week, this is what my training schedule will look like. And when there's two matches during the week, this is what the training schedule will look like. But don't worry because the schedule will also be in a download folder and so will my disclaimer as well because some of you cheeky buggers don't believe I'm actually playing the game even though I'm live streaming the games I know it's crazy it doesn't make sense to me personally but still I feel it's just better if I put the disclaimer out so you guys actually understand what is going on under the hood So as always, the tactic folder will come with around five different tactics. So there's going to be a version that I use at the graph shop, a version that I use at Sassuolo because not every single time I'm just loading and plugging. Sometimes there is slight tweaks. Sometimes I've just got a goalkeeper that can't pass with his feet. He has to throw. So I have to make that tactical tweak. And then lastly, we have a Manchester United one, which is a massive tweak compared to the other two because now it's a Manchester United tactical rebuild and I've got to really, really make the tactic suit the current crop of Manchester United players. So first off, we will be using the 4 2 3 one shape and if I'm totally honest with you, it's not actually going to look like this. It's going to look a lot more funky. One reason why is because we have shifted this attacking midfielder to the left-hand side. And then we've also shifted this winger into attacking midfield. Now, do you remember earlier when I said I couldn't fit all these wingers into the tactic? Now you understand why. And I feel the box-shaped midfield suits Manchester United really well. If you are going to use Mason Mount, Casemiro, Bruno Fernandes, and possibly one added midfielder. Now, that could be Ericsson, it could be Amrabat, or it could be what I think uh, is Jaden Sancho's best role possibly at Manchester United is also a number 10. So I've got a few number 10s, a few defensive midfielders to choose from. It could be fluid. It could be very, very versatile. One reason, again, why I feel this shape is perfect for Manchester United. So carrying on with this Manchester United rebuild, this is the shape that it's going to look like. We're going to have a left winger here, of course, for Marcus Rashford. And actually what we're going to do is just move him into that actual number 10 spot and then move Hoysland out onto the left-hand side. Then we're going to have Hoysland on the left. Then we can have Bruno Fernandes here, Mason Mount, possibly Ericsson, possibly Casemiro. That could be one of the shapes. Or we can bring back Mason Mount there and then we can add in Jaden Sancho. Whichever way works, it, I mean, it just looks strong either way. Luke Shaw left back. At right back, we're going to go with the lot. Left side of centre back, Martinez. Right side of centre back, Rafael Varane, of course. And then in goal, Andre Onana. And this here is my Manchester United tactical rebuild. Of course, not complete. We still have to add the roles and the instructions. 
Of course. <laughs> so here is the movement idea for the tactic. Of course, I'm not just creating a random shape purely for the sake of it. There is actually an idea behind it. The main idea is to create that box midfield that is so popular in real life football right now. So I'm just having fun trying to create ideas around having a box midfield. And here you can see the right side of DM number six. We have a number eight, a number 10, and the right winger slash right attacking midfielder. We also wanted to make a fluid formation as well. So the players currently occupying the box doesn't always have to be the same players it the left back can come in and join the box the right back possibly at times can join the box and the striker as well because we will be using a complete forward while someone that has to drop deep to collect the ball as he does the number 10 can go further forward so as number 10 leaves the box the number nine can actually join the box as well so as the left back cuts in that left side of dm can go forward the right back can push forward the attacking midfielder can join the striker or the left back can make a back three and then the center forward and the attacking midfielder can rotate positions now that looked difficult to defend against of course it was in actual game in football manager this is the shape that you're likely going to see majority of the time so as we're building out with the right back here uh, diego de Lott has the ball looking at varan you can see See our back four shape but then Luke Shaw he does have the option to cut inside if he cuts inside McTominay can push further forward Bruno Fernandes can also push further forward and that can make a box between Mount McTominay Shaw and Casemiro but you can also see Sancho out on the left wing majority of the time it was Rashford he's looking to get in behind Rashford now the striker he's got a couple options he can either drop deep or get in behind he's got to read that situation perfectly but in truth it does just look like a normal 4-2-3-1 when you are playing but you can benefit from tactical nuances using this sort of asymmetric 4-2-3-1 shape so back to creating the tactic for the Rashford role we are going to be using inside forward on support Hojlin will be a complete forward on attack or you could just use an advanced forward that is down to you I say you have three options complete forward advanced forward and a pressing forward the reason why I'm using complete forward if I'm totally honest with you is because it's a role that I don't always use my go-to is always an advanced forward sometimes it's nice just to try out something different in attacking midfield we are actually just going to leave these two here one on support and one on the attack both attacking midfielder role for the Mason Mount role we are going to be using a Segundo Volante so when I can get further forward push up and help create well, making sure that we maintain a box shape in midfield so Luke Shaw can cut inside and a Mason Mount can push ahead. For Luke Shaw to cut inside, he of course has to be an inverted wing back. And then for the Casemiro role, we are going to be using a ball winning midfielder on the fen. Martinez, a ball playing defender. Rafael Varane, you could use a central defender or ball playing defender here. Now you can go for the balance of one playing calm and one taking risk or you can be a daredevil and I mean both just taking risk and then Diego De Lott, he's got that whole flank to himself to be bomb up and down so he's a wing back on attack lastly oh na na what's his face super keeper on attack now for the tactical style I will say it's possession based a lot of the games we are getting 60 70 percent of the ball but I did use the Gegen press preset to kind of start off as my canvas for the attacking width I did change it to fairly narrow this also helps a bit with Luke Shaw coming inside midfield I did remove play out from the back but we do have focus play down the left underlap on the left and then an overlap on the right passing directness for it to be more possession based of course we are going to be using shorter passing in transition I left it the only thing I did add was distribute the ball quickly and for out of possession I did drop my defensive line remove step up more and then added get stuck in and voila this is the manchester united tactical rebuild this is sort of a catch because this isn't actually the strongest it's not the original version neither is it the strongest version so now these two tactics or one of them is the actual original so i would say the grass shop version is the original it is where we actually created a tactic why did we create it like this simply because we had no good left wingers when we joined the team there was no good left wingers and then we didn't actually manage to sign one so it was hey let's just create a tactic where we can still use a 4-2-3-1 but just without the left 
winger so this is the actual original with attacking mentality by now we was a decent side so i was confident enough of using the attacking mentality this uh these are the team instructions the tempo as you can notice or as you can see the tempo is no longer on higher it's on slightly higher the uh in transition is practically the same without distribute the ball quickly and out of possession again practically the same but the trigger press has just got one knock to the left so this is the original but this one is the Sassuolo version which I would say is the strongest now actually going to Sassuolo predicted to finish I believe at the time it was ninth 10th and we won the league instantly only losing our first game at match day 33 or 34 whenever it was and this is the version again slight differences we do have a wing back on support rather than attack and we have a dlp on the fend here as well the mentality has dropped to balance and we do not have on the lap on the right and we have added be more disciplined you will have all of these versions in the tactic download folder but we have one more mission because this Manchester United season isn't over. No, 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 no. We are in the Champions League final against Manchester City, which we will be playing. Now, getting to the Champions League sounds surprising until you actually see the road to the Champions League final. So, I would say the most difficult team that we played throughout the whole run to the final was Bayern Munich, which we had in the group stage, and we did lose 4-1. I mean, the first time we played them, we lose 4-1. And then we had Molde, Copenhagen. Those are the other teams in the group stages. In the first round, or the knockout rounds, we had Borussia Dortmund. Then in the quarterfinal, it was Feyenoord. And then in the semi-final, it was Milan. So all teams we are expected to beat here, apart from Manchester City, who we have now in the final. Let's go. Glory, glory, Man United. Glory, glory, Man United. Glory, glory, Man United. So this is the team that we are going to go with, the Man United version. Now, I could use the away to elite teams version, but we are going to be brave. And we're going to go with the main version first and see how it gets on in the opening 30 minutes. Glory, glory, man united. I also forgot to add, actually, in a tactic bit, which is very, very important. It's actually very, very important. Always tight mark the opposition wingers. Very, very important. Oh, here comes the first highlight. It's Luke Shaw throws it to Casemiro. Jaden Sancho inside the box gets his shot blocked. Here is Mason Mount. Luke Shaw under pressure. Plays it back to Rafael Verdan. Here's Casemiro. Oh, oh, sugar. Well done, Sancho. That is great, great counter pressing. Here's uh, Jaden Sancho. He's getting caught there. Well done, Cassie. Oh, it's a great save by Edison as Kevin De Bruyne loses the ball inside his own box. Very dangerous as uh, Heusler has tried to put the ball back in the box. Here comes a corner for Manchester United. It's Luke Shaw on the corner. This might be headed away. And yes, it is by Haaland. Falls to Casemiro. Mares tries to win the ball, but it falls back to Casemiro. That is a very risky ball there by Diego Delo. Across the pitch there. It's Heisman. It's Rashford. Mason Mount throw. Goal! It's 1 0 Mason Mount. <laughs> no way is he going to lift another Champions League trophy. He is on the way. Not halfway there yet, but he's on the way. And Manchester United just kept the pressure going and going. Heisman dropping deep, plays it into Rashford. Rashford first time to Mount. Mount Cooley. Cooley slots it in the net. I mean, I just noticed our attacking trio here are all English. Mount, Rashford and Sancho. Southgate, I hope you're watching. Oh, here's Jao Cancelo now for Manchester City. Kovacic, Ruben Diaz, Rodrigo. Lovely football here by Manchester City. Luke Shaw's got to get tighter there. And Onana just picks that one up. The highlight's still going. It's Rafael Varane now. Casemiro, here comes the build-up from the back. And that was a risky pass there from Casemiro. We've done well there, though. Creating triangles. Jaden Sancho back in midfield. So as you can see here, it's still effectively a 4 2 3 one We're not very narrow or too narrow. Jaden Sancho does like to come out wide and help support the build-up. And here's our team shape right now as we are building out. Heuslund and Rashford, though, are standing on top of each other. <laughs> they switch positions, which is actually a very, very nice thing here. Here's Sancho to Amrabat. Casemiro. 
Jadon Sancho. Lovely build up for Manchester United. Lovely pass there for Mount to Delot. Delot. And rebound the edge of the box. And it's just wide. Slowly approaching half time. And we are at half time. Manchester United 1, Manchester City nil currently manchester united have been the more dominant side we've uh, created a better chances though there have been no clear-cut chances and six of our nine shots so far have all been long shots so maybe we can be a little bit more patient in and around manchester city's box so what we are going to do right now is go back into our tactics slow down the tempo but also work the ball into the box let's go oh we have a free kick out in this wide area mason mount Whips it in. Heijlund. And that's two for Manchester United. Jao Cancelo doesn't even jump. Six foot three. Rasmus Heijlund. Ah, puts his nut in it. And it's a goal. It's 2-0 to Manchester United. I mean, Jao Cancelo did jump, but he, he might as well have not jumped. He just jumped and did nothing. In the Champions League final, it's now Manchester United 2. Manchester City nil and the lot is struggling out there. Oh, Kevin Brandon whips in and Rodrigo. That's a free header. That is very, very bad defending. So we are now going to go to our tactic. And this is where you can kind of change to try and, you know, make sure you get that point. You can see for the away version, we are also using a advanced forward, more counter attacking base. So we are going to get uh, the lot off for Wan Bissaka. Change this now. Maybe not to. Uh, we'll leave it on wing back attack, actually. We'll leave it on wing back attack. And then also, Jaden Sancho has been a bit, eh, I wouldn't say he's been missing, but we are going to bring on Anthony, stay wide, run wide of the ball. Anthony can dribble more as well. And then we're going to go back into the game. Oh, here comes Jao Cancelo with a throw to Rodrigo, Laporte, Kevin De Bruyne. Someone clamp him. Here comes Anthony. Anthony, what? Oh, if Hojin was ready for that, that would have been an absolute lovely pass. Here's Foden, gets clamped by Mount. Here's Casemiro. Amrabat now in space finds Juan Basaka just comes on whips in the ball that's a very very not good ball <laughs> here's Palmer now for Manchester City plays it back to Stones this is where Manchester United would like the ball oh well not getting played through Anthony we are working really well off the ball here here's Juan Basaka he's he just beat Kevin De Bruyne for pace ah what a ball it's free now Manchester City are getting absolute worked in this uh, Champions League final. That was fantastic work by Aaron Wambasaka there as well. De Bruyne chasing him. He's full. Ah, my hamstring. Ah, I'll give up. Foden doesn't even try. The ball goes in between the defenders and Hoysland just taps it in. I mean, that XG there has got to be like a, oh, a solid 1.0 XG. No, not even. His mount now. Out wide to Rashford. Manchester United are not letting this pressure off. Rashford into Amrabat. Penalty ref, something. Oof. Over the bar. You know what? We're very confident in this final. We're very confident. I think some of the young boys want to get a taste. They want a taste. So we are going to bring on... Uh, should we bring on Mainu? You know what? We're going to risk it. We're going to bring on Mainu and Hannibal as well. Possibly, yeah, we're going to bring on Hannibal as well. The younger lads from Mount... And here we go. Close out the game, young lads. Let's go. Uh-oh. It's a throw. Sure, to Rashford. Rashford to Cassie. His ca have a shot. Winston McKinney heads it out. It's an intriguing sign in there by Manchester City. Here's Haaland. Do not press Haaland so hard. Here's João Cancelo. Gomez. And you know what? Another mistake. They have made subs. And I don't think we've got tight marking on their uh, subbed wingers. Here's Haaland. Oh, I want a clean sheet. Well done, Cassie. Oh, no, no. Oh, what a silly. Oh, he's missed. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. You've got to chill your beans, lad. Here's Raphael Varane. Casemiro. Varane. The youngster, Mainu. Back to Varane. Casemiro over the top to Garnacho. He's got the pace to get there. And he does get there. Plays it into Hannibal. It's off the line by Ruben. Hannibal could have got a Champions League. Oh, God, Nacho! What's going on? Absolute mayhem inside the Manchester City box right now. This is insane. Luke Shaw whips it in now. Oh, he's going to whip it in. And he's looking for Heusler and Laporte. That's a decent header there by Laporte in all honesty. It looks like the young lads are going to close out this game. But the manager on the sidelines, RDF, does want a clean sheet. Here's Varane, Casemiro, Anthony now. Over the top to Heusler, but Walker, I mean... It's silly that we tried to attempt that with Walker 
running back there as well. Here's Phillips out wide to Walker. Here's Ruben. Just let them have the ball there. We don't have to press so hard, but I haven't changed anything tactically. Here's Martinez now. Casemiro, Heuchelin, Anthony. I see the break and we've tried that ball one more time. If you see your team always trying to attempt that ball, do slow the tempo down. It's likely to do with the tempo and they're just trying to get that ball through quickly. Here's Casemiro. Anthony plays it back to Varane. Casemiro. Anthony out wide to wan -Bissaka. This team are very confident. Anthony, you can't! gets his heart trick. It's a hat trick for Heisler. I did struggle to get my words out there, but I wasn't exactly sure who got the goal there. I thought it was Hannibal at first, but it was Heisler. It's Manchester United for Man City nil. This has been a walk in the park. We've seen about one or two highlights from Manchester City. It's been all Manchester United. What a performance. I mean, football manager even wants us to see this go one more time. It's not even a close offside, but I know football manager wants us to see the goal one more time. And okay, did it even show us the goal? And that looks like that. Oh, maybe not. There's what? There's, there's a highlight for one more goal. Hopefully, this is just a header over the bar for Manchester City here because I do not want to ruin my clean sheet. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Football manager, no. Oh, what a save. Oh, na na. That's his name. Oh, na na. That's his name. Oh, na na. That's his name. Come on, boys. Gomez seems like he's wasting his time here. I don't. I know, no, no. Come on. Oh, hey, hey. Hey, no, no. It's that eccentricity. Eccentricity. That word. Yeah. But. Champions League winners once again, Manchester United, Mason Mount kicked off the scoring and then Rasmus Hoysland goes and scores a Champions League final hat-trick and here comes the boys now lifting up the trophy, we have, and unfortunately people, that wraps up today's video, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to, uh, Support. If you want to support us, make sure you join the Patreon or you can check out the Patreon. And if you can afford to, then you can join the Patreon. Also, make sure you like this video, subscribe as well. I shall see you on Twitch on my days. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Peace out.